Oh, welcome, welcome to the Show Up Club. A little bit past 9 p.m. on the East Coast. And you're saying to yourself, 9 p.m., that's late for you, old man Larry. It is, but it's Monday, which means I can stay up late. I have permission to stay up late on Monday nights only, but it's fine, I am. And we are talking today about something that I know many of you are thinking about. And that is the idea of art imitating life or life imitating art. And is it worse now or better or more or less. And I have with me a star studded panel as exciting and interesting and super cool. First off, I have the returning champion, the crazy man. I, he's called the dragon of the, of, of the uh, Southern Tier, but I like crazy man Southern Tier. It's actually more fun. He is the man from No Sound Bites Alive, the one and only Michael Voss. How about you, sir? Hello, Larry. I'm having a great, it was a great weekend. Best way to start off the week, having a conversation with you. I always enjoy that. And uh, all the guests, it's always fun. So this should be a great time. There we go. And first time newbie coming on to the show. So happy to have him. The man known as Nerd Roddick. Also, Gary, how are you, sir? Hey, much better than I'm unmuted, man. That's on brand <laughs> yeah. for me. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's uh, accurate. I'm great. It's eight o'clock here in the great uh, state of Texas. We're doing good. I uh, I did absolutely nothing today, so I feel like I, I that is a good. I'm day. rested. I'm rested. Yes, I am actually not rested. I was busting my ass the entire weekend doing uh, all types of crazy political stuff and actually moderating two debates. But that's okay. I am here today to talk about something and the issue I actually want to bring up here. Seriously, though, as I'm joking around, always I do worry that sometimes we, particularly our youth, are being affected by art more than we should. Now, we know that youth is very often affected by art, right? I remember when I was a kid, you know, you like the, the cool pop star of the day, whoever that person is, you think they're cool, you're gonna be like them. But I think now it's maybe more. I think with social media, things have changed. Am I wrong? Uh, kinda. Okay, tell me. Kinda. Um I don't know. I, I was thinking about this for a little while, but I, I think what we're seeing now in entertainment is the result of the indoctrination that we've been going through. Going okay. through the, from high school and college, we've been seeing this, this path that's been set for these kids to go down. And as an example, let's take uh, um, feminism. Okay. okay, so women are supposed to become men, essentially. We, we, we're, we are like two minutes in and you went to feminism. Okay, go ahead. Well, yeah, no, it, it's just an obvious one because the, oh, we got the that. girl boss because of the feminism that's being taught in the schools. That they, they have this power fantasy that they have to become a man. They have to adopt everything that a man oh, is. Hold on. That, well, wait, 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 wait. Now, so now you're going to say they have to become a man. Can't can't women also be bosses too? Can't we have Wonder Woman? We don't only have to have Superman. We can no, have Wonder they, Woman they too. They used to. And I think, I think, Gary, you will agree with me. They used to be. I mean, there were a lot of great... Um, going back, we had Sarah Connor. We had uh, Ripley from Aliens. We yep. had... You said yep. Wonder Woman, and we can go back with that. They were fantastic, but they were all feminine. Yeah. Oh. Okay. So, so it's totally fine to have a girl boss if yeah. as a woman uh, without a giant chip on her shoulder, you know, uh, oh. which is what we're seeing in, in I mean, mainly Marvel stuff, right? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And, uh, I mean, culturally, we were progressing as normal as, as normal can be until... Mm -hmm. 2016 i mean stuff stuff was coming in uh, this this could be a long one here uh <laughs> okay. our our institutions in this country including the institution of the uh entertainment industrial complex uh has been uh invaded invaded by uh cultural marxism and it was always there it was always in the background but it never took over and even the people who ran hollywood didn't take it seriously until recently until right around 2016 when things took a hard turn. Because if you look back through the history of pop culture, it's always comes from counterculture, like counterculture. Yes, rides that's up. True. Yeah. Yep. But the problem is when the counterculture becomes essentially the state <laughs> and they become a bunch of authoritarian assholes and they become everything they supposedly fought against. Well, right. that, that stems from the cultural Marxism. That's always kind of been there. And again, has it was minimized uh we could talk about the mccarthy hearings which are erroneous i mean that's 
there's much more to it yeah, but, than okay, history so, tells us. And he was right about a lot of shit. Mm -hmm. uh, isn't, this, though, isn't this a natural, right? That yeah, I mean for girl bosses in general. If you want women to be equal, sure you move up, aren't some of them? But we're just repeating heavy like, hitters? what happened in the 90s. There was a whole girl boss mo movement in the 90s. Remember, mm -hmm. like, remember the stickers on cars, girls kick ass. And Lilith Fair, and all. but girls were still being girls back then. That's the kind of thing. Yeah. And 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 now we, it's not like, uh, uh, honestly, it's not about girl bosses. It's about men becoming girl bosses now. <laughs> so, ah, okay. I mean, yeah. everything's gotten crazy. Um, yeah. and and there's not, we're the rebellion against that, right? Yeah. Uh, and and it's a common sense rebellion. This is this is even uh, it's not even on party lines for the most part. Not in my sphere anyway. Okay. Let, let me let me push back on both of you a little bit here. Sure. Uh -oh. We go back to the 60s, right? Mike's already right. mad at me. I haven't even pushed back yet. Let me push back before you get mad at me, Mike. Let me push back <laughs> first. All right. You go back to the 60s and you got the Flintstones, right? Yeah. The freaking Flintstones. And Fred Flintstone is a knucklehead. He's not a smart guy. The smart one's Wilma, right? The, the wife was already a smart, savvy woman, right? That ended with like maybe Lucille Ball, like the Lucille Ball the man was the smart one and the guy who made the money and she was not the quite head, right mm, and then not quite move from there and but even the honeymooners i go back to the 50s the honeymooners even ralph Cram's a knucklehead and and his wife is is the savvy one i feel this has been happening way before 2016. Well, I, I i think there's an understanding in older the old, further back you go in the media the more you understood there was a difference it was accepted that the relationship had different values. Men had certain expectations. Women had certain expectations. And you were able to excel at the things that you naturally were able to excel at. It's not to say that some women didn't run households. They did, but that was more of an exception in the terms of going out and getting the job, getting the paycheck. But you would come back home from, the, from work. You'd take your paycheck. You'd give it to your wife. She paid all the bills. She made sure the house ran. She told you where you were going to go on the weekends, where you were, okay. who you were going to go Hold visit. Hold on one second. And that was reflected. Before we in get in trouble, I want people to know, I invited a woman who's a girl, girl boss on the show. She hasn't shown. Don't think I purposely said, I want three dudes oh. on the show to talk about girl bosses. I did not plan this this way. Don't kill me. Well, and I mean, if we're talking about culturally, culturally as a whole, right? So yeah, okay. intersectional feminism, and that's what it is. We're I, yeah. I'm I'm talking about intersectional feminism, Same which thing. is just okay. an aspect, yeah, which is just an aspect of the greater problem. That's it's not the main problem. It is an aspect okay. of a much greater problem. But uh, now, if culturally. I if, if I if I go to art now, right? Sure. Again, I just went back and I talked about honeymooners. I talked about you know. Um, uh, um, um, Flintstones. Flintstones, right? That affected us. I mean, I think we we did see that and think something about what family should be, whatever. But I, I feel like now with places like a TikTok, as I, I mean, that's the common one, but Twitter, Instagram, whatever's the thing, I feel like we are bombarded far more than we were with a once a week Flintstones episode or whatever, right? Now it's like 24 7 we're being bombarded with. This is how you should be. You should be this way. This is what life is. And two things. While the Flintstones wasn't real life, and neither was Lucy or whatever, or the Simpsons or whatever is the show of the day, wasn't real life. Internet life is not real life either, but it's 24-7. Doesn't that make it worse? Well, this in different ways. Entertainment was the fantasy that we wanted to believe in. Leave it mm. to Beaver, um, Lost in Space, the original Star Trek, uh, DS9, Farscape. These were all fantasies that we wanted to be the reality. We knew it wasn't. We all live mm. real life. But that's why we had entertainment, to escape that. The comic books, Captain America, great example, right. Peter Parker. They had some problems, but they were living that fantasy that we could all relate to, which is why men and women enjoyed everything I just named in almost equal numbers, basically. No, no, no. When but, we were young, comic books were for boys. Mostly. When we were mostly. young, comic books for boy, were for boys. Now, mostly. not as much, but it really was for boys. Well, well they're mostly, for nobody but, now. Well, exactly. <laughs> for nobody. <laughs> no, because now the fantasy... That's true. There is That's no true. fantasy anymore. 
it's no fantasy. Now ah, it's just depressing. Okay. It's like here, instead of a fantasy, we have this warped sense of reality. Like this is what life could be ideally. And now it's, this is what life is going to be imposed upon you. Ah, okay. I mean, does I that you. make sense? I, I tell this story often. I don't know if you guys know, but my, my, my daughter is studying sequential arts in art school now, right? She's trying mm -hmm. to become a storyteller cartoonist. She had, she's got a couple of gigs already. She's studying this now. And at one point they had, the school had a bunch of people from the industry to come and the kids, the students could do a pitch, could pitch to them an idea. And it was like 30 some odd ideas. Every single idea had someone of a, someone who's part of the GSM, the gender and sexual minority community. Someone part, every idea. Now people say, oh, that means the kids are brainwashed. And I think, no. I don't think every kid happened to think of a story that has someone who's a, who the main character is a GSM, part of the GSM community. I think they thought that's what was going to get them published. I think they self-censored and created a story. Is it, isn't that them. brainwashing? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Is it? I don't know. I, I It's certainly just influence. It's, well, how can I okay. get my story made? I have to capitulate to maybe uh, ideas that i that wouldn't really inspire me or values and it, you know what a character that you write doesn't have to match your values at all uh mm. it just has to be an interesting character uh i think the biggest problem and again it's an art school so not mm -hmm. judging what art school your daughter's going to but i'm guessing that art school politically is going to slant a certain way not too many libertarian art schools out there <laughs> okay maybe not wrong should be You're not but, wrong uh, uh, and, and the, you know, teachers have influence. They're the, they're the little kings of their own fiefdoms there. And, uh, you know, kids are kids. Uh, they, they, you know, they want to get their story made. They're just there yes. for the art. And maybe they go there for the love of it. But this is where it starts. And the problem is not having these ideas out there. People can make all the gender stories they want. It's 100%. the silencing, silencing of critics and straight up, canceling of other types of stories you know mm. uh you know i cover stories i cover mm. comic books uh mostly yep. mostly tv and film uh comics is basically my hobby it's kind of irrelevant culturally right now which is sad other than the, the industry yeah. is dying and there's a new yep. independent movement that's like in an early stages but this is how these things react it's you are not giving the audience what they want, which is a good story because you're self editing because that is coming down from on high based on a yes. political bias, which yes. is, is anti uh, antithetical to art period. Oh, I like that. That is yes. I remember a guy, uh, I forgot who it was. I had one guest on and he said something that really, really struck me. He said, the second that you censor science, it's no longer science. True. Because then it's not open. I think what you said is true about art. The second you censor art, it's no longer art. Yeah. No, I, I mean, I, oh, good. No, I was, you know, like uh, for the most part, I think anything goes. I think there's certain things that are like a pornography and a creepy, and obviously, you know, that break laws. I'm not for. So, but other than that, if you're adults and you're making art, uh, do what you want. I don't care. But uh, once you start telling a, a, especially in the mainstream, I mainly cover pop culture for people who don't know. So for the mainstream, which you are tr looking for mass appeal, you have cut out half of your audience by literally calling them bigots and racists mm -hmm. publicly, yes. publicly. So you're, yes. you're so it, it's, it's killing interest in art. Uh, it's killing your industry. Um, and, uh, you know, I think right now we're in this huge cultural shift where, well, those gatekeepers, we don't need them. We we, we don't right. need Hollywood. You know, I like these things a lot. Yes. I'm passionate about mm -hmm. them, but we don't need them. And we can certainly make them on our own. And that's what Hollywood is afraid of. Uh, and that's why they, you know, they put themselves, they, they're the ones who painted themselves into this identity politics corner. Not us. 100%. They did yeah. it. And now yeah. they're finding uh, it, it very hard to get out of when it, it would have been the simplest thing. The problem is they would have to stand up to the to the people they capitulated to, which they don't have the sack to do. They just there's don't. Two, there's two they don't do, but they haven't figured out the one the two pieces. I think number one is they haven't figured out that you don't need big finance anymore. 
You can crowdsource things very effectively, the stories that people love. And big finance has destroyed the art, has destroyed most of American business. Big finance has destroyed most of it with ESG and things of that sort and forcing it. And second is they're worried about making money in China. Those well, yeah. two things together, they're separate, but both of them have affected that world. I think a lot, two different ways, but both of them have kind of neutered if that makes any sense. Uh, to an extent, it does. Uh, I think there's there's a lot more to that, but I, I kind of want to piggyback someone on what Gary's saying, and it, it applies to what you're saying, Larry. Um, yesterday, yesterday, uh, you, uh, Gary, you were on with EFAP talking about the, the Two Towers, one of the greatest films that have ever been made. I really love that film, um, and I enjoy each and every one of the characters. We were talking about Hold that. Hold on. Uh, we're fast. The Two Towers. Let the audience know what that is. Lord of the Rings. Lord of the Rings. Okay. And what happens on that one? Give me a, a general idea of what that happens in that movie. Uh, Generally, just like you have a group of heroes who are facing down evil in the form of orcs. It's somewhat medieval knights and okay. swords and magic. Got it. All right. They're fighting down orcs in a battle um, that they shouldn't win. They're like a thousand to one outnumbered. And is they have to try and one, fight and survive. Is this the one when the when the riders come and attack the big elephants? Is that that one? Or yes. Is a different movie. That's the that's the that's the third. Well, one. that's this is the one where they're at Helm's Deep. Yeah. Ah, got it. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. okay. Thank uh, you. Now, now, uh, now, continue. My audience is now up to speed. Yes. No yes. problem. So, at that point, you were you you said something I thought was really interesting because you said Golem is an addiction. He is the example of addiction. Yes. And I think that's a really brilliant statement because he is but i think that's kind of like what we're seeing in art now and this is why you're seeing so much big business in there why you're seeing it so catered towards china the addiction is propaganda because propaganda gives them the money they think they want it gives them the Who's audience the they, they here? think they they being hollywood the progressives um the socialists the intellectuals the academia mm. that really okay. don't they don't consume any of this, but they think they're smarter than us. And that if they give us enough propaganda, we're going to suddenly see the light and join their perspectives, their ideology and follow them. It doesn't work because their morality, their ideology, literally, we see this every time. I mean, we saw it with Madam Webb. We saw it with uh, the Marvel. Oh, yes. We've seen it in She-Hulk and the Witcher Origins. We see this in all this art. No one wants it because it is propaganda. It's not a fantasy. It is a nightmare that they're trying to force down our throats. And at the end of the day, the two things that it's all about is money and compliance. Give them money and comply to what they say. And that's, I think, ultimately why everyone always rejects this stuff in large numbers. It, does that all make sense? Does it all come together to you guys? It's probably why it's why people are rejecting it now, because, uh, well, quite frankly, over over COVID and everything else, like yes. people were pushed to the limit. Right. Mm -hmm. And they finally opened their eyes and started paying attention because most of us are busy. Most of us are busy doing stuff. It's not even a judgment, yeah. really. It's just that's the way life is. You get you guys are what busy. And once uh, you're forced to, to especially when you know, people don't seek this out on YouTube, what, what you're given through the network, through the corpos and the, and the network, uh, broadcast is pretty much the same story. Mm -hmm. Uh, Fox would be a little different, but I mean, all the other networks will pretty much say the same thing. They're saying the same thing today. Uh, and, and it forced people like, okay, I'm being bullshitted here. So I'm going to go to other places and that forced <laughs> that wake up. Right. It was, and it was, it was hard. It was, it was a hard wake up because people had their very comfortable lives or somewhat comfortable lives and they, or, or a difficult life. And they're like, I don't need anything else in my difficult life to make it more difficult. Uh, but the government forced everybody's hand and it was, a, it, it was, we're the cultural revolution is the, is the Marxists who are committing the corporate we we are the response we are the rebellion yeah, but, to mm -hmm, this corporate mm -hmm. to let this me touch oh, yeah. a couple things that rebecca brought up i want to grab i want to grab rebecca gate put a couple things out here and she brings up she says that's why i watch youtube more than netflix and other streaming shows right and i think that happened to your point gary that happened during covid people started saying 
well, I'll just, I'll watch YouTube. I'll watch the stuff. And, and when the writer's strike happened, nobody even cared. Nobody noticed. No. The writers were on strike for like a year. We were like, whatever. I don't care. I'm going to watch Gary on YouTube. I don't need you. I'm good. Right. Like I, I have my entertainment and I can interact with it right back and forth. But then she also does something else. She says it's not no one, a majority. I do have friends who enjoyed those shows and movies. And my daughter is 20. And a lot of her friends, they do like this stuff. Like they, they, they self-insert. Like to your point, Michael, the, 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 the movies aren't there. This is not really art. It's just people inserting themselves. It's not a fantasy. It's I want to sh- put myself on screen. It is almost the idea of not even fan fiction. I would even say it's narcissistic. It's, Which is I want to put myself fan. in it, right? Okay, fan. Okay, I'd buy that. Yes, all right. And then the kids go, yeah, that's right. And so I think some of the youngins do enjoy this. Not many, nobody with money, but I do think some of them, them do. Well, that goes back to my thing about that. That's what they've been trained to like. They don't know the difference. We're not showing them any of the mm. classics anymore. I mean, you try and watch Sesame Street is now considered R-rated. I mean, the Sesame Street we all grew up with. <laughs> right, okay? right, right. And they consider that R-rated now. I mean, you got to be kidding me. We're the, they're, they're trying to tell us, oh, we know so much better. You wouldn't be here if we didn't go through this. And it couldn't have been that bad because we're all here. And yet, oh no, but you're just evil and bad, and you know, you're an istinophobe because you're not complying. Screw well, you. You are an istinophobe, boss. That's you. Well. You're istinophobe. <laughs> 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 you are both. So, Gary, no, I, I, I mean, Gary, are, are we off on this? <laughs> you would, well, Gary, you'd never believe how many well, times they called me a racist and uh, you know nazi you know what i would believe it now there would be a time i'd be what the hell but nowadays it's like yep yeah, uh-huh i i <laughs> that checks yeah. out yeah. checks out <laughs> who cares checks out. at this point yes. they've overused yeah. it so much and and it's not it's never been an argument it's not an argument um and you know larry you ask is it's not that we're still in the learning process but we're we're fighting ah, okay. is 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 uh political fundamentalists who treat it like a religion who think basically this the, the politics is settled the science is settled our side is right your side is wrong mm. I, I don't wake up like that i i don't like what, whatever i be believe politically you know uh i'm open to new ideas i don't wake roll out of the rack thinking i'm right out of, about everything but that's what we're fighting we're fighting like a, a, a true believers which is mm. a, a scary thing and 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 then with them we're fighting a lot of cowards a lot of cowards who, right. who won't stand right. up for them, who are especially when I'm talking about Hollywood, who won't stand up right yes. now. There is a bit of a little rebellion going on, but it's anonymously. You know, uh, my friend uh, right. Chris Gore over at Film <laughs> Threat with Alan Ng have been running the D files and, uh, you know, getting anonymous letters from WGA writers who hate everything about the strike, everything uh, what, what they capitulated to, uh, the new DEI rules, which are utterly ridiculous. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, Horrible. And uh, and and by the way, those DEI rules are at every organization, every major corporation. They are at your public schools. They are everywhere. But the, mm-hmm. but, but the good news is they are being rejected slowly, right? Yeah. I, yeah. I was against Very DEI slow. early. I literally said DEI doesn't make things better. It doesn't make things neutral. It literally makes things worse. It is harmful. It's not neutral. It is harmful, and I've been screaming that for years. And now, finally, because I used to do that kind of work, I stopped because they don't want they don't want my kind of work. My work when I used to do this work for a living. For those of you who don't know, I'm a consultant, I'm a businessman for a living. That's what I do for a living. Right? I do that kind of that kind of work. And I would teach emotional intelligence. That's what I would teach: emotional intelligence, understanding that you are not everyone else, and everyone else is not you. That is a healthy way of going about things. The difference between intent and impact recognizing those both as different, that's healthy and good. DEI says, no, everyone, you must, you, you must know that everyone is based upon whatever group you decide, that's who they are, and intent is irrelevant. All that matters is impact, and by default, you are evil. And well, it that, is nothing but harmful. That's yep. because DEI is essentially, it's equity. We're talking about equity, which yep. is the eternal division into smaller and smaller groups in individuals taking them from being human beings with agency into characteristics that must obey it is dehumanizing it destroys people's agency it doesn't recognize 
humanity or, 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 or any aspect of that. It is simply about creating the robots. What was it? Uh, Carlin it's also, said, it's also smart enough to run the machines to dumb task questions. That's DEI. That's equity. But it's also unforgiving, which is, you know, I was always taught in everything I, 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 I did and every, every business I've ever been part of when I've been off some public company, it's the same thing. You want to be harsh on systems and you want to be very good on people. Right. Mm -hmm. You want to be harsh on systems to make your systems as good as you possibly can. But you want to be good on people. Right. You want to give people the opportunity to grow and to fail and to do the right stuff so it can become better. You want your systems to constantly be tighter and tighter and tighter, but not your people. You want your people to be able to grow and be better. And it just drives me crazy. But before I go, I have one thing. Joe is a good joke. He does say most assessment characters are naked around kids. So they kind of got you yeah, on that's that a one. Good Mike. point. That is a good point. It's, <laughs> just saying it is. I never thought about that with Snuffleupagus. I really did. <laughs> there we go. He was naked, so his he's joke might have been out. Maybe <laughs> Oscar the Grouch. That's why he's in the trash can, but not not so, not Big Bird. <laughs> yeah, of course, our Bird. systems are becoming tighter, like around our neck, right? Yes. Uh, with all our rules and stuff, and not allowing people to grow and make mistakes and marriage and and merit meritocracy is being legislated out. Uh, and that, well, that's the death of our country. Uh, so we 100%. need to, and also, you know, it's also the death of being a human. Uh, you, yes. you, we aren't meant to be cuddled. This, mm -hmm. this, the world is not fair. It's an effed up world. You need to internalize that. And once you do, life does become easier. Uh, it was rough. Yeah. Uh, it's rough for Voss, rough for me, mm -hmm. rough for every, every, people in the chat. We all have our rough spots, but like yep. it made us so much better. But now, you know, uh, it, you know what's messed up about DEI is it's it's super racist. By the way, you're yeah. you're you're fighting yes. you're you're fighting discrimination by being uh, every DEI uh, chart could be you could save a lot of time by just saying are you white or not? That's it. That's all you need to ask. <laughs> yes. Are you white and straight? Yes yeah. or no? And the rest of it's fine. Yes. And then yes. uh, after that, you know, now now when people get a role, when people when uh when when somebody gets a directing job. And that's a person of color using their fucking horrible language. Excuse my right. language. Um, you can drop out everybody, there. including that person, is now going to think, "Am I a diversity hire?" That's messed up. Yes. But they even are a diversity if the hire. person. Oh even, no, 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 no! That makes you. That good. makes you. Even if they're good, but yes, they are. that's okay. He's right. That's like, oh, I'm diversity hire. I, I'm now a victim. You can't call me names if my stuff sucks. Yeah, but there's it's some people. You're a racist. But there's some people who actually. <laughs> I, I've had people reach out to me from Hollywood. Uh, directors reach out to me from Hollywood going, no, no, this is effed up because I, I worked my ass off yes. to get here. And, and now I'm being treated like, uh, well, you know, uh, the reason they contacted me is because they liked in one of my videos. I said, well, directors are being cast now. They're not being yes. hired. They're being cast to parade around mm -hmm. and, uh, the, the suits will tell them what to do. Uh, and yes. that's, that's what's going on. So uh, it, it, that's horribly unfair to a human being. Um, and, and, and I am a full believer in meritocracy. I don't care what you look like or how you identify. If you make something good, cool. Let's, let's 100%. rock with it. But, and but, I, um, I think that's not that, happening. Right? We had it. I bring up often and I'll, and I'll, I'll bring it up. Well, Voss knows I brought this example before road warrior, mm -hmm. the movie road warrior, right? What? 1979 to 80 in that area, whenever yep. it was made, yep. something like yep. that in that area. 82. The, yeah. One of the 82, there we go. One of the, one of the bad guys in the movie the, the, the guy with the mohawk, he was mm -hmm. clearly gay. He had a gay, gay lover, yeah. right? And it, we were like, okay, whatever. Who cares? Like, nobody cared. He was, so what? Right? No. It, was just, it was whatever. And he was, they wrote him in. It was wonderful. It made sense. There's probably not many women. So the, the gay guy can easily come to the top, right? Because there's probably, right? No worries. All good. Who cares? Nobody cared. Nobody met. Nobody cared. It was all good. No one good. asked. But, no one cared. And yes. humongous, the same thing. No one asked. No one cared yes. because that wasn't. Well, see, because it was a good like, movie. To Gary's point, it was a freaking great movie. But you know Nobody why? Cared. You know why? And you guys tell me if you think I'm wrong. But we used to have story. We had the story, and there might be a backdrop of something political in there. But that wasn't the, right. the main story. The story right. was the story. There was the you know, that could be the C plot running around in there and maybe you pick it up. Maybe right. you don't. And that was something for the director and, you know, his little highlight reel. Fantastic. And everyone else could just have A and B plots and enjoy it today. No, it's politics 
first. How do mm. we put, how do we, we have this political idea. Let's try and fit a story to, to, to carry. That's actually this part of DEI. You're absolutely right. Yeah. And that that's so, so story comes first and, and a good story will get, uh, an allegorical message across just mm -hmm. fine to anybody. Yep. If it's a good story and you treat the, you treat the audience intelligently. Yeah. Uh, but what's being, uh, again, this is from film threat and I covered it in a video a couple weeks ago. Uh, one of the things they're, uh, it's a survey that they're asking WGA writers. And mm. after you fill out what race and gender and identity you are, they, uh, when they, when you start pitching a script, they're like, well, are you the person to tell us? And why are you telling the story? Now that's right. a natural thing. But it 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 that it's the follow up to that. Why are you telling this the story? How does it relate to uh, the world we live in today, which is just uh, you know it's I hate that modernism and it, it it a good story will relate to anybody at any time on a human level. Right. Yes, that's it's, it's and we've why, done it for thousands of years. It's why we keep remaking. It's why we keep remaking Shakespeare. Yeah, Shakespeare, it's why we keep no, why? remaking Shakespeare. We get, we call mythology. Else. Yeah. Yes, we, <laughs> yes, know? mythology. Yes, because it doesn't matter where you're from. It doesn't matter what you're doing. 100. Let me talk to my audience for a second, guys. If you're watching here and you like what we're we're talking about, and you're watching, so you do, then click the like button. What is wrong with you? Do you have a problem with your finger? Click the like button. Do it now. If you care, click the like button. It does matter. If you're watching on Twitter, then please retweet this right now. Just or re-exit or repost it. Whatever is the X thing you do now. Used to be retweet, whatever it is. You want your chat to come to the front? You can super chat me if you want to, if you happen to be watching on YouTube. That's awesome. You can also become a member on YouTube if you want to. It's just $4.99. Come on, dirt cheap. It's like a cup of coffee. That's actually less than a cup of coffee in New York City. So, yes, that's all it is. All good. But no matter what you do, please follow. If you would follow Gary on Nerdrotics on, on Twitter. And please follow Mr. Mike, Michael Voss on Rumble at no sound bites allowed. I have Molly Smash here because she's supposed to be here, but you can follow her at Delta Asher Hill anyway on Twitter, even though she's not here if you want to, but she was listed here because I, hopefully she'll still come. But anyway, please do it if you could. So let me now move to a couple of comments. I've got a bunch of comments and some of them are, are, are teasing, so that's fine. I'll grab some of them. <laughs> Bring um, it. Yeah, I've seen them. John, John Chow says, we need to know if Larry has read Silmari Silmarillion. Silmarillion. The Silmarillion. Silmarillion. Yes. Yeah, uh, there's still yes. time. I have not. I guess I should. It's now, a can, there's read. an audio book. It's it's uh it, as a huge Tolkien fan, not the easiest read in the world, but yeah. once you get into it, it it opens up uh the oh, it's there's some epic, truly like beautiful okay. and metal stuff in it. Like it's it's great. Yeah. There and it, it's All something right. like admittedly, it I, I didn't read it till years after I read Lord of the Rings. So Oh, I okay. read it, it felt more like an encyclopedia to me when I read it the first time. I got about halfway through. It is a little bit rough, but you know, there's so many little stories in it. Fantastic. It's something I really do. I do recommend it to people who love. If you love the movies, you will love the books and you will probably enjoy the Cimmerillion as well. It's crazy. It's yeah. Crazy. There we go. Manolo says, Hail Gary and the Fellowship. There we go. I like that. So it's poetic. Like that. So it's absolutely yes. poetic. And 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 you know, it, it was put together by Christopher Tolkien, greatest son who ever lived, guarded his father's legacy. But it's Tolkien's yes. language and and his use of language is just it's pure oh. art. Incredible. There we go. There we go. I love that. So Rebecca says, without art, the crudeness of reality would make the world unbearable. George Bernard Shaw. Agreed. Nice. Very Agreed. Nice Absolutely. Andrew says, you the best, Larry. That is an accurate statement. I am indeed <laughs> the best. That is true. Absolutely. Now, Mike, we're going to mess with you. Uh -oh. says, we're going to have to talk about Michael's lack of background flair. It's there true. I mean, they do they do got you on that one, Mike. I mean, Gary's making me look bad, but I mean, I got some at least. I got a little bit. I got something going on, right? A little bit. A little I got bit. a purple I, wall. If I took the green actually, screen... If I take the green screen down, it's a purple wall. I lost the studio. Hey, last we were talking about this, so slightly serious. Yeah, the last four years for me, devastating. Lost ninety eight percent of everything I've ever had. That's fine, because fine. I didn't stop. I'm not stopping. Mm. That isn't the first time I've I've had losses. I've talked about it before. I've been homeless before. I'm not, which is why I'm a homeless advocate amongst the other things I do, sure. and always keep moving forward. I lost the house. I lost the studio. Guess what? 
I'm still doing this. And instead of having a good background, I got a green screen. Guess what? We've been trying Move to get forward. rid of you, Mike, but you keep coming back. Every time we try to get rid of you. That's it. Keep coming you know, back. Here's my positive message. Keep moving forward. Talk to people. Keep moving forward. Opportunities will come. There we go. When, now we're messing with Gary because he says, I know we say there's a minimum of 10 pieces of flair, but Neurotic has 370 pieces of flair. Yeah. So you kind of went overboard, my friend. A, a little bit. <laughs> Did you, you think, get the stuff on the ceiling? Because I yes. remember you. Yeah. Really? Yeah, I've got two more ships to hang up and then I'll do my room tour. But uh, just just to tell you how much backgrounds don't matter. My uh, my most viewed video is, <clears throat> is in a hotel room in San Marcos, <laughs> California. I recorded it in a freaking hotel room. Uh, there so, we go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> there we go. Absolutely. So let me move away from that and let me move towards what I think is crazy, which is social media. And we're on it now, right? I mean, we're on it now. But I feel like two things happened almost at the same time. Eh, not at the same time, but close to the time. The lockdowns really made people jump on social media because you physically couldn't be social. I think we were already moving towards mm -hmm. heavy social media, but I think the lockdowns kind of forced it a whole lot faster than it would have happened naturally. And I think we as a culture, particularly Americans, I don't think we're ready for it. I think it was so fast that we just didn't know how to handle it. And the youth in particular, I mean, I'll tell you an interesting story that you may enjoy. Um, my daughter now, who is 20, when she was younger, maybe 12 or so um, in that area, she used to watch uh, PewDiePie on, uh, on YouTube. And I don't know if he's that popular now, but he was very popular. At one point, he was the number one guy on YouTube at one point. So she would watch him and she would watch him. He would be talking about somebody else playing a video game. So she's watching him watch somebody else play a video game. Oh, uh, this reaction. blew my mind. Mm -hmm. I did not get it, right? So I went to her and I said, I don't, I, I don't get it. Why? I, help me to understand. I don't get why you're watching it. And she told me something that really stuck with me. She said, Dad, I feel like I'm watching with him. And when she said that, I thought, I will not let that man be my daughter's father. And I got directly involved with everything she watches, I watch. We watch things together. I actually got all my, my kids, I got them all together and, and my wife too in the kitchen. And you could play video games if you wanted to, but you had to play with us in the kitchen. So I made it, we all, like we'd all play like, uh, my kids used to love Roblox. They don't really watch like anymore, but they used to love Roblox. I had a Roblox account. So we're all playing Roblox together, right? So we're all watching. Now to this day, my daughter still send me TikToks. Like they'll send me a TikTok. Oh, isn't it funny, dad? They'll send me that stuff. I feel like the lockdowns expanded that and so many of our youth are so stuck in social media, they actually prefer it to human life. Did I go too far on this? I, no. I no, go ahead. No, uh, no, but it was, uh, it was our government's response to COVID that exacerbated a problem that was already there. Right. Mm -hmm. Uh, but, mm -hmm. but, uh, but the core issue of pe why people like to watch live streaming or a lot back yeah back during live TV is there's a lot of lonely loneliness in this country. There's a lot of, yes. a lot of addiction and these are all yep. things I've gone through. So addiction, homelessness, uh, yep. despair. Mm -hmm. And what, what kept me going was listening to, uh, it was called Armstrong and Getty. There's this radio show in the Bay area that I freaking, I still love. Uh, I'd listen to that and I'd kind of keep me going for a few more hours. I'd find a live stream and I'd watch and it just felt mm -hmm. like there was a personal connection there right right um and uh th th that's the core one of the core issues uh the other one is yes we jacked over our youth i don't think there's any coincidence that there's uh there's a bit of a problem with identity we'll just say i'll try to keep it as safe as yes. possible with our children <laughs> right after covid right after we yep. locked them out of schools and mm -hmm. and broke the habit of our society the habit of our society yes. was getting up going to work doing something keeping everything going and we shut it all down and we shut yep. it all down for it freaking cold. But um, and mm -hmm. uh, these the, the, the long term ramifications, we have no effing idea. We will yeah. know 20 years from now, but we have yep. no idea how much we jacked up our kids. That's why I rooted my you know, we had a lot of reasons, but I rooted my family up and just got the hell out. I'm, I went to a state that was open so we could get back to our lives. And it was hugely expensive. Hugely expensive, terrible, um, but it ended up benefiting my kids, which that's that's that was the goal. 
right? I uh, pulled my kids out. I homeschooled my kids for that time. I pulled them out. We I wouldn't go to schools anymore. We yeah, I homeschooled my kids. Yeah. I did. I was I was just with you. Then I, we I went to Florida. Look at, I got one I look at what San Francisco Florida. was yep. doing because I was in San Francisco at the time. So I got one look yep. at what they were doing. I'm like, uh-uh. Nope. Uh, I we'll was in New York now. City, brother. I was right with yeah. you. I was I'm uh, like, I'm, nope. I've already <laughs> had out. my I've already had my clashes yeah. with San Francisco teachers before. Uh my kid was walking over homeless people to get the, you know, uh <laughs> thankfully they weren't dead but they looked dead uh homeless people uh he would lose school days because of homeless people homeless people were yes. waving around weapons and they'd shut down the school it's like enough of this crap but yeah yes. it, we'll, we'll never know but yes they they went to social media so did adults it's not all kids i mean yes. there's a, a lot of youtube careers and tiktok careers a lot of streaming careers twitch were all made during covid i mean friday night tights like kind of blew oh, up during yeah. COVID. yeah uh, and what I remember early on, you know, cause I've, I've been locked up. So I, I know what, um, confinement does to a, to a human, even yes. you know, it, when you get c confinement over a year makes you crazy. Yep. It, it just makes you crazy. And there's, Fast. there's lots of ways that the, the prisoners deal with it, uh, including drugs and all this other stuff. But you know, for one of the, I'm one of the few who wanted to remain sober and out of trouble and get out of there alive. Um, and my mom was my mom minded my own business but i definitely went nuts i went yes. straight up nuts in there for a little while and I, and I did a live stream on it at the time i remember i was like you guys might need to know hey you're not going to be in prison but it's going to be like you're being confined and when it gets to the six month part you're going to start yep. going fucking crazy you're going to yes. start like losing your shit and and our whole country did that now you know some people handled it and that's great but uh it, that's what happened and uh yeah. You can't do that to a society. You just can't. So, it breaks so, it. But hold on. This is yeah. the point I want to bring up, right? For many people, right? If you were, say, for example, locked in a cell for many years, and maybe there was a bird out on your ledge of the one window you have, that bird might become the number one thing in your life. That might become a very important thing for you because yes. it's the only thing of life you're out there, right? Yep. I'm saying that these kids were locked up, and the only thing there was TikTok and YouTube and now it's two years later, and they still think TikTok and YouTube is a thing. So if the TikToker tells you blah, 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 you believe a TikToker. If the YouTube guy tells you so-and-so, and I remember, and this you're talking about identity. I'll give you this for my own kids. Both of my kids had identity issues also, as most young kids do, right? Most kids do. They started telling me things from TikTokers and YouTube. And all I said was, Okay, great. Go to school. Okay, great. Do your homework. That's it. That's all I said. Okay, great. Do your thing. It's whatever. You're whatever. Let's keep moving. Let's keep moving. Keep moving. And they grew to be two straight kids. Yeah. Well, no, I just left them alone. <laughs> most kids are. Yeah. And, and yeah, yeah, you didn't. You didn't to be, to be clear, I don't get myself in trouble here. To be very forward, and I'm, I'm not. I'm. I'm not virtue signaling. I'm being. I'm being very forward. If my kids were gay or something else, I don't care. I'd love them either way. That would not change yeah, my course. love for them. But I didn't assume that they were something that they said. I just said, be you and you'll figure out whatever it is. Yes, that, that, that's did. exactly that's how we, that's yeah, that's how we parented too. It's you know, we didn't influence them with religion or any policy. Yeah. Like I had mine, I spoke them, but I'm like, you guys believe in it, you whatever you want. You 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 grow <laughs> into this world area. And and fortunately for me, I got a couple of base kids. But uh <laughs> you know, this is great. If, if you leave them alone, uh, <laughs> they're gonna yeah. work out fine. That's why these we see so many of the youth today don't know how to do anything because they mm. haven't grown yes. individually as individuals in, in terms of their spirituality, their intellect, their social interactions, especially now. And then you add on top, and that's because we've been more and more technology so fast, we haven't learned to adapt to it. And then you lock them down. You Basically, you're right. We were all put into prison sentences. Yeah. And that magnifies it at the same time we've got the propaganda going on. You have, these are, we have never had a time in history where we had so much that affected so many in such a negative way. And the one thing that should have helped us with this, which is what we were here today, is entertainment. It's our escape from that. It's yes. our one release that well, we can all get around the cooler. We can send each other. How well did movies talk. do during the depression? Pretty damn well. Right. Exactly. Yes. I mean, 
and we could have had that. I mean, remember yep. Astartes? Remember, did you see Astartes, Gary? I know no, what it is. Yes, I have to. Oh, okay. Yeah. You got to yeah. see it. It's fantastic. One guy made this. It's about Space Marines. It's Warhammer it's, it's 40K. Warhammer 40K thing. I don't know much about Warhammer 40K, but we watched it and it's pretty incredible. Dude, once you get into Warhammer 40K, together. you're it's a rabbit hole. You're going to go. Boss is always that. something about Warhammer. I always, I, I got to watch it. I guess, do it. He's I'm always like, talking about it. You see all this stuff? Do you think I got room for 40K stuff? <laughs> Oh, you don't need <laughs> crazy. You'll, you'll, you'll need a bigger house, man. You will want all the stuff. <laughs> I want all the stuff. I love my space marines. That's I'll cool. Them. For, Warhammer 40k party. fans are hardcore, and I love them for it. I absolutely oh, yeah. do. Oh, yeah. Total, it, it, total respect. Huge lore. But I mean, we had that opportunity. There were people coming up yourself. Um, many people were coming up with entertainment that were helping people get through that time mm. with some levity, some inter interest, uh, distractions. And then we had this big push from political organizations manipulating L uh, the uh, entertainment. We had the ES, you know, WEF, WEC coming in with their ESG and their money saying, no, no, you'll, you'll do fantastic. Just listen to us uh what is it sweet baby sweet baby ink sweet baby ink you know they're coming in saying don't worry we're going to keep the good times going that's the drug to the entertainment industry yeah so that they can Cash. shoot us full of their preferred drug their propaganda mm -hmm. and try and shove it down not realizing that we were damaged already we were just starting to heal and now they're giving us another problem we have yeah, to deal and, with. And now we're fighting amongst ourselves more than ever, ever. over things mm -hmm. that just don't, they're like not that important. I don't mean to be cruel. I'm not trying to say that people don't have issues with, with you know, identity and such. People do. But compared to eating, uh, yeah, compared like, to surviving, what, what, what? I mean... We're an affluent society when we're yeah. when somebody has time to think about their gender at all and not dig yeah. a hole for water or di or go farther and <laughs> dig a hole to go take a crap in. I mean, like yeah. We, yeah. we and and there's a lot of ingratitude. I think that that's mm -hmm. a lot yes. of it. But that's, that's the adults too. And and ultimately, with with social media, it's not going anywhere. It is here, right? And we're just trying to get our heads around it. But I mean, it's parenting. I, I don't want. Uh, I'm sure Larry doesn't want any or or Voss any government regulation. I, I, I no thanks. I, I mean, base, basic okay, laws, basic laws to protect kids. Yes, I'm fine yep. with that. 100. Um, yeah. But uh, beyond that, parenting. I don't. I don't want. I want. I don't want the government coming in telling us what you know. What is what is hate speech? Uh, you know, Doesn't look, look what's going on. Canada's like going nuts. Canada went insane. Oh, yes. Oh and, yeah. And and that yes. is that's your uh. That's your canary in the coal mine right there. That's that's like that's where I know, we know the could polite be. Canadians. What happened to these guys? No, no, they were the nice guys. The they were supposed to be the nice guys. They're not. No, they're the evil there's a people. lot of the Brits have it too. They got, they got shut yes, down. I mean, do. the trucker thing was great. It was one of the greatest yeah. things I ever saw because it was it was a perfect protest. It was one that like they, they couldn't fight because it was bouncy castles and people singing <laughs> and honking right, horn. Right, like that's right. how you protest, you just have fun yeah. and yeah. The smile in their it's, face. It's tough to shoot those guys when they got a bouncy real castle. tough to shoot. Tough to shoot them. <laughs> people with the yes. bouncy castle, but that's Very the way hard. to. That was the perfect way to protest yes. uh, through Absolutely. mockery. I mean, you yeah. straight up mocked the government, uh, and and yes. and so like, hopefully, that's how we go forward. Uh, that's like that's that. how I approach. You, you know, I gotta my say something, protests. Mike. Joel's teasing you. He says, "Mike, come on, obey, comply, damn it, just do it." <laughs> Just yeah. do it. Yes. But he goes, well, I'm supposed to, I mean, you know, you and me, Larry, we're, we're already categorized as part of the obey crowd. That's what we're supposed we to do. Mm. I know we're well, not going black anymore. Cause we didn't vote for Biden. So we got to figure out what race we are now. Yeah. So I don't know. I That's keep saying, Oh, well, the democratic I, party yes. will tell you eventually if they stay in power. Eventually. Oh, yeah. I'm waiting for it to come in the mail. <laughs> yeah. I figured it would come in the mail. They would tell me, you are now yeah. Puerto Rican or whatever mm -hmm. I am, right? Whatever. That's what I figured. But I want to be Filipino. I love Filipino people. I'm going to pick Filipino. Samoan. Um, Samoan. Samoan. Samoan's a good joke. Up. Yeah, yeah. Maybe, yeah. Maybe that. Yeah, my but, shop um, was near Daily City. I had uh, half of my clientele was Filipino. It's great. There we go. Filipinos cool. are wonderful. So, yeah. So, I was, yeah. I, I'm going to go with that. But anyway, um. Um, Joel says AI art makes me doubt doubt every photo now. And 
this part to me is funny. Like my daughter's going into art and I told her, I said, she would tease me. She would say, dad, there are a lot of artists that are better than me. I said, I don't care. It doesn't matter. And she's like, what do you mean? I said, look, you want to make money. You don't have to. It's good if you're a good artist. It's good. I mean, please, if you can draw well. But knowing how to draw is nowhere near as important as knowing what to draw. Knowing what to draw is the critical piece. That's what you need to focus on. How to draw, who cares? But to Joel's point, does the AI also begin to learn what to draw? Yeah, it did. And it made uh, it made the Vikings Asians and made yeah. everyone in England <laughs> black. <laughs> It literally <laughs> made black Nazis. Literally. Yeah. 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 Black Germany. Nazis. It was like, literally. yes. Wow. Okay. Yeah. It learned all right. Uh, now, <laughs> who taught it to do that? I love how they're like, oh, that was an error there. You programmed it. <laughs> exactly. What there might be some atheists here, but I, I, that's just something that makes me believe, you know, maybe there's some sort of architect or creator or higher power out there that just made Google make the biggest. Freaking, how could they even make that mistake? And it was yes. great. It was fantastic yes. that it happened. Got memed yes. to death, and we shame them. Now, uh, the the Babylon Bee had the best headline that Google promises to be racist in secret next time. Uh, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but that's real. Yeah, that's not real. a bad, that's yeah. real. I know. Yes. That's, it's I mean. it's that's ex essentially what they're going to do. But um, AI is like the internet. It's like all the, mm. all technology. It's like the synthesizer when it came into music. It's a tool. It's a tool right yeah. now. It's not going to become sentient anytime soon. And when it does, the robots will kill us all. But, yes. uh, you know, like until <laughs> then, it's something like we, we can hate it all we want. And I'm not the biggest fan of it, just to make mm -hmm. it clear. But it's here. It doesn't really matter. So uh, what, what it will do, though, what, what the thing... Uh, people might hate but it's going to open up the door for people to make their own movies their own yes. games now so much easier yes. so like i i am totally against it being and it will be manipulated to rewrite history and yeah. uh, and but on the other hand it will open the door for other people to create their own stuff much yes. easier you know, um, yes you know Gary, I, yes they're going to try and change history but they're doing it already I mean, what was that? Oh, yeah. uh, the British, uh, one of the British monarchs, they turned her into black. They made uh, the Queen of the Nile. No, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah. Amblin, yeah. and yeah. then uh, yeah. uh, uh, and they Cleopatra. made Cleopatra. They made Cleopatra. Cleopatra. Yeah, Cleopatra. And, and a Viking queen in the Viking show. They made her, uh, yes. made, you know, yeah. and, sure. What there's, really there's makes me stuff. angry about that Cleopatra one, and I, this is why I'm angry. There actually were Nubian pharaohs. You could have yeah. found yes. a black pharaoh. They existed. You not just not that one. That one was Greek. So why did you turn the Greek one black when you could have just found a black one and then a story about the black one? Yes. There they there were black, there were there were because, there were Nubian pharaohs. They existed. You could have found one. But it's because everything they're doing, the propaganda is so poisonous. It is so obviously objectionable that they have to take over everything that was they, before it and yes. turn it because you won't accept it any other way you have to have a black superman you've got to turn batman and robin gay you have to do these things because no one would accept they can't write they can't create no they're activists and innovate Yes, they're just activists. So what activists do is just hitch their wagon to whatever's popular. Then they decimate it. Don't really care because either way, they decimated the patriarchal traditionalist story yeah. that's obviously fascist. So yay for us, or we took it over. What? Either way, they're happy. But it's you know win, what? Win. You know what doesn't make them happy? A good story. <laughs> you know, <Yeah>. nothing. <laughs> nothing makes them happy because activists aren't freaking happy. But no, um, that's true. That's they're, they're yes, miserable people, true. and they want everybody to be miserable yeah. with them. And you know what? That's yes. our greatest weapon. Is we have fun. We're happy, and uh, you know, thankfully, we have a bunch of old stories we can enjoy until they try to f them up. But uh, that's why I'm a big fan of physical media. Uh, and, yes. and, ah, and, and okay. preserving this, I'm a huge fan of physical, yes. you, you know, yes. X-Men's coming out, right? I'm not watching oh, on Disney on. Plus. I've got my X-Men cartoon. I have uh, an, an X-Men question. Here, baby. Hold on. I got an X-Men question. Um, this, <clears throat> the, uh, the, he says, Hey, you're the neurotic guy, right? Sure. Does anyone have <laughs> the answer as to why, again, the X-Men 97, they are not including core members, the original new, the original new Len Wein, Len Wein? 
and Dave Croak, Crocum, ex team of Colossus and Nightcrawler, and later mainstay Kitty Pride. I don't care if they have Rogue, Gambit, and Jubilation. Lee, just give me my original new team. Yes. Same yeah. Um, well, th they move. I mean, it, it, it depends on where they are in the chronology of this story. I think it's supposed to be a continuation. And that's probably what ah. I would hope they were there at some point. Uh, but, um, it, you know, good Len Wein, God rest his soul, creator of uh, co creator of Wolverine, so many other things. Uh, you want to hear a sad story? Saw him at Comic Con 2019. Uh, he was dying, uh, hung out with his son, and uh, a Wolverine, uh, the, the uh, Logan had just come out or mm. a couple years before. And uh, we had discussed like, hey, so Hugh Jackman like gave him money because he wasn't getting residuals. Is that right? From his creation. Yeah, this that, that generated wow. billions of dollars. This guy. So Hugh Jackman gave him money, which makes Hugh Jackman cool. But yeah, also he, he was there dying, signing stuff for us. So I brought my son because my son's name's Logan. And he was doing it to, to raise money for his kid. Oh, this is freaking awesome. And and the guy, and he died just a few months later. He was the nicest guy in the world, but it, it's it's these corporations it's so funny that the uh the the rascally rebellious uh left who think they're always fighting the system and the man love these corporations who could care less about yes. they're don't care they at all. Freaking horrible. I am a free market yes. guy. I hate giant corporations. I can't stand Me too. Them. And they uh, destroy, they become monopoly and they wreck they everything. Destroy the mom and pop, you know, and yes. uh, the artisanal thing. And what's happening is they're so fucking stupid that they're destroying themselves. And I'm happy for I'm here to just like uh, you know, uh let me, marshmallows let me grab over a the super fire. chat that that agrees with you. Frederick says to me, much art now is plagued by the unhealthy degree of shameless pandering to a niche crowd rather than creating healthy escapism. This is what you're talking about, Mike. That can yeah. potentially appeal to anybody, regardless of color or creed. And thank you, Frederick, for the ten dollars. Thank you so much for the super chat. I appreciate that. I think he's right on the money. This seems like exactly true, right? Mostly. Uh, one, uh -oh. one, one slight thing, Frederick, that I want to change right. in that. Okay. Niche isn't bad. A niche okay. is fine um, because sci-fi is a niche for fiction. OK, so when you understand and look at it that way, that, oh, there's a niche within there, Warhammer, which I love. Of course, I was talking about, you know, that's a niche within within sci fi. No, 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 no. But what he's saying is pandering when when someone does Warhammer or any of the niche things, they're not pandering to you. They're putting together a cool story that people like you would like. They're not going, let me have a guy whose name happens to be Michael in this so that Michael Voss will love me. That would be a pander. Well, no, I understand. I'm saying that they're they're assuming. Look at most of the stuff that's out there right now. Uh, I don't know what, what what's uh, Echo. Great okay. movie. Okay, great TV show to use that as an example. They're targeting everyone as if we are the niche. If they targeted oh, Echo to I the niche, it probably would have been okay, and they would have probably made it better. If they said, okay, you know, our target market is deaf, one-legged, female, Native American people. Okay. Small group. Okay. And they probably <laughs> really would small group all over. But uh, instead they said, well, everyone's like that. So everyone's going to watch this. And and everyone said, no. That's well, I'll not. go one step was, further, Mike. That if – I'll go one step further. That if you are a Native American – deaf person you you have to love it and if you're not that you still have to love it or you're a bigot so no matter what you have to love it doesn't matter yeah and, 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 and well the, for one that show was just a hor horrible there's a pa they the kingpin for no reason gets a bunch of white guys to attack a powwow at the end <laughs> yeah. yeah and kill everybody you know like what I you know, know it, it's even... I, I don't know how you made it through that, man. I made it through the with that. first. But, uh, yeah, so um, what they, again, to, to, to talk about, they piggyback on something that's popular. So they use it as a platform for influence. It's not, so the Marvel Cinematic Universe started out fine. It was fun. Mm -hmm. It was a people, yes. you know, like, it, 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 it wasn't super planned. They, it was very basic in the beginning, and it made a bunch of characters that were based on the comic books, and we all liked them. And then one yes. day, Kevin Feige decided, hey, we need more women. 
hey, we need to start showing pushing in more representation. And, and it all happened around, you know, a couple of years after 2016 and Harvey Weinstein yeah. and Me Too. Mm -hmm. And it was uh, a lot of people trying to keep their jobs and Hollywood was getting HR departments and all of a sudden DEI started coming in. And, it, you know, the old uh, the old axiom with the storytelling with storytelling is basically uh, a writer with their salt is like, hey, I'm, you know, you're not necessarily going to make something for the fans. I'm going to make something for me that hopefully right. I'm going to make a story for me right. that you like. Now it's I'm going to make propaganda for me that you're gonna like there's a great unintentional yes the, the movie serenity we're just i just watched firefly or right movie. unintentionally based movie now yeah. by the way from the very liberal joss whedon but the opening scene with river tam she's mm -hmm. a she's a school child and mm -hmm. she's talking about the independence the independence and the alliance is basically yeah. the society we have now and she's saying hey the independence just they want to be left alone and uh mm -hmm. they, they don't want to be told uh you know they don't want to be told uh what to think and uh the teacher goes well, we're not going to tell them what to think. We're going to show them how. Yes. That's that's what Hollywood yes. is right now. And then commands everyone yes. to lie down. Yep. Lie down. Just lie, lie down. down. Oh, just lie down. Oh, and good. by the end, I'm not giving away the ending of it, but when you understand how serious, what happens when you lie down, it's like, oh, When my you God. lie down and you're like, yeah. oh, my God. Especially when you watch the Serenity, the movie Serenity yes. today. All right, now I got to watch. I got to read <laughs> a book now. Serenity? I got to watch a movie. You guys give me homework. I got to watch book, movies. He and loves to now. give everybody. Trust oh me, God. you're doing better. You could be playing Golem or um, <laughs> or he can make you watch. What was that one that you made as he nearly busted his head open watching? It was going crazy. Oh, Robin Hood? Yeah. There Robin Hood. I, right. They were talking about the Panderstone in chat. Somebody sent me a Panderstone. Yeah, that's that's yes. that South Park episode was a cultural moment. Yeah. Like hundred percent. That, that was when things. The tide is definitely turning. People have had enough. Agreed. Uh, they, they've absolutely had enough. And the you know we you know Dune's doing very well at the box office, but like this is their first box office hit since like a Taylor Swift movie came out in October. Hundred like, percent. And and, and uh, you know, for big box office hit, like potentially a billion dollars. Um, and it's, it's a desert for Hollywood this year. And there's a possibility of another strike, which is very real <laughs> from, from my Aussie, which is great. Like I'm laughing. I my cannot wait. Well, yes, they actually, please. Well, th these are the craft workers. So they, you know, I'm not, I'm totally anti-union, but they have a leg to stand on. Like they could really shut Hollywood down and all. The, mm -hmm. all and mm -hmm. since they were allied with the other unions, the unions have, have to, to ally with them yeah they have so to. if they go on strike they have to shut down hollywood they can't use scabs and these are the people these are artists mm -hmm. uh the you know the people who build the sets in like a night you know it's a lot of the blue collar people in hollywood yep. but they can you know i you know and again i i don't have a dog in this fight i'm like eh, go get them whatever uh right. you know I, I think just you know i think personally having a union just giving yourself another boss and uh, taking away one of your freedoms by uh giving up your ability to negotiate which i think is totally insane uh, but we'll see let what me, happens. Let me Unions let me grab a couple comments okay. if I could. Chaka Zulu says I'm a boomer. Well, almost, almost true. He says PewDiePie is actually pretty based. Yes, it could be Hassan. I don't know. Is Hassan based? I don't know. No, Hassan, Hassan is, is a maniac. Hassan is one of the dumbest people on the internet. Yes. Well, there we go, Shaka Zulu. I think Hassan may not be as based as you think. So yes, there we go. PewDiePie is based, and uh, you know he. He became, he was at, he's not, Mr. Beast is the biggest uh, YouTuber yeah. now, but he was the biggest yes. YouTuber. Then he went, you know, just moved to Japan with his oh, wife, yes, my had a baby. Told me that. Yes. Like, it's awesome. Right. It, it was, it's, it's an awesome story. This guy who used to do meme review and stuff is uh, living a great life. Good for him, man. Yeah. There we I'm go. I, I, I love that. Nick is with you. He says 40K is great. Recommend. There we go. Space so Marines. I guess Space someone Marines. likes it. Space Marines, you can't. Can you really be Space Marines? No, not really. You just, you just can't. I mean, you, Marines yeah, can't. rule. Not gonna work. Space Marines rule harder. That's it. Correct. That is accurate. Ryan says, "I love Larry's enthusiasm." Thank you. I appreciate that. That is amazing. I do appreciate that. Yes. Um, the Zionist Libertarian says it could be more accurate. Um, the Kingdom of Kush ruled over Egypt, and they checked on the bones and found that it was a black kingdom, and it was accidentally labeled Egyptian. Oh, is that right? Yeah, but there were Nubians too that were. So there was Upper Egypt and Lower Egypt, and Upper yeah. Egypt had more people who were Nubian or Kushites, I guess, than Lower Egypt that had more people who were more Koskazoid in that area. So, but yes, the, my point being, you could have made a story, a very interesting one, 
about a black pharaoh. They existed. Which, you could yeah, have made one. Mean, you got to start with they have to be able to write. They have to be able to have an imagination <laughs> to be exactly. able to then go and, somewhere and else. Their response, that, you know, like, uh, you know, when my good friend as you know, went completely viral last year by calling out pronouns yeah. in Starfield or yeah. when I called out, you know, Doctor Who, because I think Doctor mm -hmm. Who's a man uh, yeah, or yeah. with Cleopatra, the response is always, what does it matter? Well, if it doesn't matter, then why did you, you it? change it? Of course yes. it matters to you. Stop, you yes. know, uh, it's, it, it, you know, it, it's this game of fighting optics and, and just disingenuous people all the time. Yes. It's just, and, and, and we're fighting for the truth, whatever it is. It, just be authentic uh Absolutely. And, and we're moving into a more authentic age and and that's where i have hope with the youth i, I don't think they're all lost on tiktok i think there's a lot of base kids out there i, I think some are, are starting waking up. to move because yep. a lot of the young men are starting to realize that it's not working for them like this yeah. new world is not working for the young men and like you know what i'm not gonna be part of it they're, they're, well, the sad part is a lot of them are checking out which sucks but i think in the long run that's probably going to help because we yeah. need those young men to move our society forward. They're, they're, as they check out, we're going to, yeah, because them to come young back. men are put in a meat grinder yeah. in this country. Like yes. uh, of, of all makes shapes and sizes. They are put into yep. a meat grinder and forgotten. Uh, they, a lot of his other list, a lot of his in, in institutions, which I have witnessed myself. And it's, it's yep. beyond a tragedy. I see no. it with my daughter. Who's 20 trying to find young men to date. Well, you can't because they've been so beat upon. But I think what we're going to see is there's going to be this very strong movement where they're going to go backwards in time. Mm. And that doesn't mean that we're going back to the 1800s. It means, you know, maybe the 1950s, 1960s, 1970s, in terms of you have the traditional values become values again. An analog generation. Yeah. A generation Ooh. who unplugs. I'm That's hoping for yes. that. They're just yes. going to say, I'm, I'm done with this. You know? Yeah. As and long as they, they watch do. this show on Monday nights, damn it. Everything else they don't have to watch. If I you know, suffer fine, my... if the world's better, <laughs> I'm exactly. okay. Yeah. Yes. But just one of my shows. That... No, I'm kidding. Anyway, guys, if you like what you're watching, please click the like button. I know I bug you like every half hour. Why? Because I need to. I have to get past the algos. I have to get past Al Gore rhythm. I have to get past that. So please do it. Please, it does matter. Also, if you're watching on Twitter, retweet us right now. Repost it. Repost it if you are. If you want to super chat me, you can. It supports the show. You can also become a member if you want to. 49, click that link button. 49 per month helps out tremendously. But either way, follow these two gentlemen. If you would, follow Gary at Nerdrotics on Twitter and follow Mike. Please follow him on Rumble at No Sound Bites Allowed. So I do want to grab uh, a, a, so many good comments. I want to grab a couple more of these if I can. This is yeah, right for you, Gary. Easy. He says, I have a question for Gary. Are you a fan of Hellraiser? I liked the book and the first movie. Uh, I think yes. it's, an, it's an it's a really dark, uh, and I think it's great <laughs> horror. Uh, my, my, my favorite Clive Barker film is Nightbreed, though. I'm a Nightbreed oh, fan. Oh, okay. 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 I like the whole world he built up. Uh, the, the first two Hellraisers are good. Like the first, the first Hellraisers, all time. Yes, oh, all time. Great. I love the pinhead parts. Like you know, we have such sights to show you. I know, <laughs> so good, so good. Oh yeah, yes. Pinhead is so, he's yes. the man. Yep. Um, yes, I loved that. But that uh, that's example of what we've been talking about the the innovation that imagination that was then transformed into a medium for the rest of us to see. And Hellraiser wasn't the biggest movie that ever came out, but it's been no, consistent. It's, yeah. it's a cult. And that's why it works. But it had massive cultural impact. Yeah. Like mm, massive. Yes. Like everybody knew who Pinhead was. Like yeah, everyone saw it. Correct. Everyone loved it. And it's made a difference in so many people's lives. And there's so many movies and TV shows we could point to that have done that. And we're not getting, uh, you can't even remember a TV show that's shown up in the last three years. The moment it's done, it's rare. Boring, it's gone. It's like, like when, when we get, oh, no, there's now, one, there's one. Uh, hold on. Yeah. Young Sheldon. What? The TV show people like. Okay. I guess I, 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 it's not up my alley. So I don't watch sitcoms or dramas. 
I would say the one show that stood out for me in the last year was One Piece on Netflix. I thought that was magnificent. oh yes, okay. One Piece. That was huge. That but was we, we still huge. get like, but right. you know, and then you know, Godzilla minus one is the best movie I've seen in years, years. Yeah. Uh, and it's and it's because it's a lot more than Godzilla now stomping watch around. This too? Give no, I love you have Godzilla, to watch Godzilla minus one. It is uh, all right. it's all in Japanese, but it's uh, it's the best movie I've seen in years. I love Godzilla. Jimmy, I live in Japan for four years. I can probably read the subtitles. It's fine. Good. Yeah. I, I like the <laughs> original fine. Godzilla movies. We're talking Toho and yeah. Oh, love sure. that. Can't yeah. stand anything they've done. If it's oh, made the by one that's coming out this year is the one that's coming out later this month is going to be terrible. It's going to be utterly terrible. I, I hate Hollywood. But, but the Godzilla minus one is is made by Japanese company. It is a Japanese film. It was made for uh, under fifteen million dollars. Uh, and uh, it was the best movie I saw last year by a mile. Here we go. I only saw one movie last year, and that was uh, John Wick 4. I saw because I, I love John Wick. Wick. I've, I've watched the entire series and superhero so movie it. now, but I like it, yeah, yeah. And I liked it. It's yeah, but you know what? I like tired. you brought up something that that bothers me that I, I want to bring right. up. This makes me think about right when you watch a John Wick movie, yeah, it's what you expect, right? Yeah. Like, you know what you're getting. It's going to be fun. It's going to be, it's going to be Keanu doing cool, shooting people in the head. That's yeah. what it's going to be. I'm going to watch that. And I got it. What got me angry, what you talked about, Gary, the idea of the, the, the putting women in is that they did a bait and switch so many times. It like it's Superman, but it's really Superwoman, right? Or it's, oh, the no. one that drove me crazy was, was Obi, was Obi-Wan. Obi-Wan. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Obi -Wan, oh, yeah. That was terrible. But it was about black Jedi chick, right? Yeah. And, yeah, again, I'm not against the Black Jedi Leave chick. Up. Awesome. But have a Black Jedi chick movie then. Just give her a movie and make it a good movie. Well, make her, they made her a terrible it. character. They made her an absolute. But she was terrible horrible. too. So it was a bait character. and switch that sucked. <laughs> right? All so, the bait oh, and switch sucks because it. you would never watch it on its own. Partially because they don't know how to write an original yes. character. Yes. Would I watch a Reba movie? I mean, the concept of her character. She it's survived good. the purge. Yes. She became part of the empire, but it's been that secret to try and take down Vader. Fantastic. You can do something with that. I don't want to do didn't. that while I'm trying to watch Obi-Wan, a character I actually liked. And it really, we didn't. And they had this desire. I don't know what it is. Why does everything have to have a prequel? Why do I need to know how this? Sometimes it's just great. My idea of what happened in, um, even though it's Star Wars prequels, I, I'm not even. Uh, they, some but of Rogue it was okay, One wasn't but, bad. Rogue One was a good prequel, wasn't it? There was no. The only thing good about Rogue One was the last two minutes. Why? What? Vader. That's it. That's why everyone went to see that movie. Vader. Well, that was cool, but come on, it wasn't I, a bad I, movie. I was fair, it? It's it's probably the most respectable Disney Star Wars movie. Yes, but, that's true. Uh, I, I'll give you that. It's probably the most respected, but it's. Just been garbage. So there, the corporations have been IP chasing because it's safe. It's safe. True. It's, it's Very a, true. like it's safe to do the uh, you know like we got a Mad Max movie coming out. Mad Max ain't in it, but it's titles exactly. you know Furiosa because we needed right. that. You know, right. it's like no, I'd, I'd rather have a Mad Max movie, but yes. okay, fine. Uh, be right. another thing I can rip. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> out of all the movies coming out this year, the tentpole movies, all but four are prequels or sequels to existing wow. properties. Wow. I did yeah. not know that. Yep. Yeah. That's oh just, my God. That just tells you that entertainment is dying. No one has an idea. And, and, and well, that's, and people, and that's the why culture, I, the culture ahead. is moving on from like Hollywood. For one, Hollywood's not the biggest entertainment game in town anymore. Right. It, that's, it, it, right. It's yeah. gaming. gaming is number one by far. But as far as like uh, scripted entertainment or where people going, they're moving away from television. They're moving away from the theater and they're moving to streaming and, and YouTube was, was the number one streamer for, yep. for the last calendar year. And yep. it's, it's, we're entertaining ourselves now on YouTube. There's a plethora there. There, there are people making music videos. There are people making uh -huh. short form TV or web series mm -hmm. uh, films, and they're going to get better. They're going to get much right. better. Hollywood cannot compete against that because uh, they're way more nimble. Like we, the independents, are way more nimble. And by the way, yes. Hollywood basically legislated out AI, mm -hmm. uh, which is, you know, 
it's probably good to try to slow it down, but it's not going to stop anybody in the independent sphere from using mm. it. And uh, out of that, that's where, you know, and I think maybe everything goes niche and artisanal. I'm fine with that. I am spread it out, decentralize mm. it. That's great. That's, that's kind of the world that, you know, music used to be localized a bit. You know, there was yeah. always the big bands and stuff, but there would be a band that was popular in San Diego or Chicago or just New York and they'd make a good living. And that's kind of, I think where entertainment needs to go. Well, it's funny, you know, say that like people have told me that when it comes to entertainment, that back in the day, it was, you know, kind of, it was much harder to make a living as a as a band, right? But but they say today it's much harder to become a superstar, but it's yep. much easier to make a living. Like you can it's make easy, a living yeah. as yeah, right? But then it's a whole different issue. But we used to have people who went through and they were we used to have the best regional stars became the superstars. Why? They had the most talent of the people who were talented. And we don't have that anymore. You, you can't tell me uh, who was the last one. Maybe it was um, Black um, Delirious. What's his name? Uh, he did the Delirious tour back in the 80s. Eddie Murphy. Eddie Murphy. Eddie Murphy. Okay. He's yeah. pretty much the last up until Dave Chappelle. You had this huge gap and other than Dave Chappelle, there's no name in comedy that I can really think of that's truly a superstar. Like Chappelle is on the same stage level. No, that that's saw. not true. I think Bill Burr does that. Bill He's Burr not the same as what we saw with Eddie Murphy. There's, there's stars like stand-up comedians, but they haven't crossed over. My, right. And my yeah, favorite, of course, else. Chrissy Mayer, who, of course, Chrissy is the greatest Mayer. comedie of all of time. Of yes, all time, fair, of fair course. Point. Yes. Fair point. Also, but, yes. most pregnant. Yes. Also the most pregnant, <laughs> correct. Yes. Both of those things are true. Yes, absolutely. But I mean, what we're seeing is we're going to, I think we're in a phase where we're getting more people are abandoning the the studio streaming, the Disney mm. Plus, the Pluto, all of that kind of stuff, where right. you're programmed into their uh, product. Ooh, hooray. Th thank you for product. I'm getting ready for next great product. You know, it, uh, mm -hmm. roughly quoting red letter media there and we are seeing people go into social media into the youtube the rumble to really right. try and express themselves when they're not being suppressed shadow banned and right. separate of that uh you see people i'm i haven't watched regular tv in about 15 years i play video games i watch uh anime and i watch the news I do political commentary. So, okay. There you go. Right. And that's it. And when it comes to video games, I'm playing, which I think is a big thing. You're seeing a lot more people playing survival games. You're seeing them play city builders. They have a huge yes. genre because yes. you can make a world that you can feel involved in, that you can feel um, yep. in control of. Agreed. And it makes you feel like you're achieving something. And I think you're seeing that reflect in the rest of the social media. I mean, does that make sense, guys? Yeah. Well, if like you, you talked about watching old anime. So if you just combine people who watch old anime and play video games, and correct me if I'm wrong, chat, because I'm obviously a big gamer, but I think it was Fortnite or a version of Call of Duty recently. It's one of the two that had, uh, you know, a half a million active players. Yeah. Wow. Like like a half a million active players. Wow. Now the, now the number of of young people who supposedly are just on TikTok who are watching anime and playing video games combined dwarfs every single TV show uh, in in all the, in in western civilization being watched at the right. same time. Dwarfs that number. Absolutely like it's 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 a thousand to one. Uh wow. and while video games are expensive to make, uh they they they've got their independent sphere too which 100%. is which is coming up which is really good. So this is how this is how culture balances out. So what mm. what put us out of balance is the powers that be were in complete control of broadcast television, uh all of social media, Hollywood for so long that, and these are supposed to be companies that are in competition with each other and they were lockstep, absolutely mm. yep. lockstep for the most part. Yes, there were exceptions but not enough. Um now they're being forced like they, they don't want to do this 
but because they're competing against us, they're being forced to be a little more traditional in their storytelling, maybe not pissing off half the country, <laughs> which I don't think you come up, you come back from, by the way. That's, right. that's it is very that's, tough. That's the biggest criticism of Hollywood. Hollywood's doing a lot of navel gazing right now. That's, that's going to be my next video. A lot of navel gazing, but the one thing they refuse to talk about is how political they got over the last four years and how much they pissed off half the country, uh, yes. which is your biggest problem. It, I, yep. Screw the corporatism and all that. that. Those are problems too. But your biggest problem is your money. You cut your money in half because you piss them off. And and you know how you you get them back? Get on your fucking knees and treat them like a customer. For one, they're not consumers. They're customers. These are human yeah. beings who spend their hard-earned money on your stuff. Don't take them for granted. And you better start begging pretty damn soon because customers are king. People are finding that out. Hollywood so, is so, so busy. Oh, let, me talk, let me talk to my customers if I could. Oh, Barry yeah, Smooth yeah, yeah. is being so nice. Barry Smooth, thank you for the super chat. 199. 199. Uh, Mike has bad knees. Says, I hope everyone has subscribed to Dan Vask. I Hang on. Who, let me answer no. that. Uh, oh, well, I was going to say, no, Gary has to go first. It's 1 million for Gary. Dan is great with the music. I know about this. And I'm telling you, Go to Nerdrotic, get him first. Then you can go, or matter of fact, do both at the same time. Dan can't win. Dan <laughs> there, can't win. There, there's a bet, Larry, between me and Dan Vass. Oh, Dan Vass is, oh. a, is, a, is a young man with long flowing hair, mm -hmm. uh, questionable <laughs> you know, sexual orientation, uh, but a great singing voice. <laughs> yeah. Great singing voice. And yeah. uh, he challenged me to a bet last year, like first to a million. Uh, ah. if, if I lose, I have to sing a Bon Jovi song. I freaking hate Bon Jovi uh with the intensity of Ten Thousand sons and if and if and if i win then he, he wears man buns he has to sing a song uh that i write about man buns being gay so yeah. that's that's oh, the best that's so good i don't know and who it, i yeah. want to win and it was so <laughs> sure. it was so far good. off i'm like sure you know oh, yeah, it was way okay. off back then but now now it's getting close it's like uh <laughs> I just want like to be over. You're at 980. He's at like 960, I think. So you can do it, man. I, I, All right. So there we I, go. I, you heard yes, it. I am a fan, folks. I do actually watch neurotics completely separate. Right, so I watch Larry and watch Gary. To, he said, just subscribe to no. Boss. You subscribe no, no, to Boss. Subscribe to Dan. No. <laughs> he says, um, hail the fellowship. Larry, I met you at the OCLP, which is the Orange County Libertarian Party uh, charter meeting a few years ago in Orange County. Uh, I, I, I have, I haven't abandoned New York yet, but I want to, I know me too, brother, me too, but soon it'll, we'll, we'll see if we can hold on. I, Thank you I very hope. much, big boned. Which orange yes, County, we go. which orange County? Um, I think that's orange County, New York, which is, um, okay. right, right above New York city. Gotcha. Right above New York city. Gotcha. Yes. Okay. Right above New York city. So yes. Um, Craig says neurotics is right about major corporations not caring for people who put them on the pedestal politicians too. People and friendships and leave families to defend those who couldn't care less about them. Boom. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Wow. That is very true. I I I I can't, yeah. Um, Robert says Marvel died when it entered the Panderverse. Oh, yeah. Hard fact. Absolutely. There are yes. so many great characters, and the characters, there's so much they could do, even like Echo. You had a great character. She's okay. Yeah, it, she's basically Taskmaster in a female form. So you've already done the gender swap by having <laughs> Echo as is. She's the female right. uh, Taskmaster, and that would have. For been those of you know who Taskmaster is, he is a character. You, so you got to remember, this audience isn't oh, your yeah. audience, Mike. Okay, Taskmaster yeah. was it was a villain who could copy any task. Once he saw you do it, what, he could do it as well as style. you, if not better. He could do anything. The Avengers, do. you know, uh, yeah. He, he, and, and, and Echo was fine in the comic books. If you cast yeah. a hot woman, uh, a fit hot woman who can act, no one, and, and gave her a good story, no one would have a problem with it and maybe adapt the Daredevil comics instead. They completely mm. changed her powers. She doesn't yeah. look anything like she does in the comic. Uh, they they hooked you in with Daredevil in one scene, and they completely the cut bait and switch. Damn it! Yes, pin. yes, they bait and switched you again. So yeah, yes. they should have just done a kingpin series. Screw Echo. Do a kingpin series. Seriously, Agreed. brutal New York crime lord. I know people. Uh, people don't like that stuff. People didn't like the Sopranos. 
You know, they, they yeah, like the yeah. Sopranos. <laughs> they don't like this that stuff. Terrible. Yeah. yeah, no one watched that stuff. No one watched that. They hated that. The Godfather. That movie yeah. went nowhere. Yeah. I completely yeah. agree. That movie went nowhere. Terrible. Yeah. Nick says niche is completely fine. Just don't expect the niche to be a massive success. Yep. Right. Or don't tell well. Or don't don't turn well as his franchise into a niche thing. Don't spend yes. three hundred million on a niche uh, subject no. that you know isn't going to get you back. If it's niche, million. then you make it for that niche audience, and then if it's good enough, right. well, it'll uh, that niche audience will put put out that old word of mouth that still seems to work pretty well uh, as yes. marketing, and then you'll and then yeah, put put seventy million dollars into your project. We, I love how. We talk about that like that's nothing. Just 70 million. <laughs> 70 million, yeah. you know. Yeah, you got know. that in my that's front strange. pocket in case I got to cross a bridge for a toll. Got that Wasn't in my that pocket just in case. first John Wick movie? I think the first John Wick was done for like 50, 40, 50 million. 40 million. Uh, Joker yeah. was done for 50 million. Uh, first Deadpool, I think, was 70 million. Yep. Uh, these are these are normal prices for, I, I think, uh, you know, reasonable prices for a Hollywood production. Yes. Uh, and, and, and it gives you a chance to make money and, you know, they're going to dial things way back now though yeah, so we're going to start getting action and we're going to start going to get more action i'm fine with that by the way just yeah. make more action films. i think the scientific libertarian is teasing us he says nothing says i don't like pandering like pandering to people who don't like pandering <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's actually pretty funny bro that was a good one that's good i like that he did get us on that one that's good See, but they can't go to action <laughs> and propaganda they have yeah. to go oh, to what do you, mean? Just, you know and the, the three movies you just mentioned all great. Why? No pandering. No pol. No. No. no mm. Propaganda as the story. They had a story, and then it and it just did well. It, it, you have Dune out there, which you know mm. I liked. It, it's a decent. I, I the book fans are not super happy, but it mm. seems like the public is very happy. Uh, it's a visit, it, and and it, there's no. It, there's a couple things in it, but it's not. It doesn't take away from the story, and it's just a normal adaptation. It's a normal story. And people are now that there's there's a lot of hyperball too. Like, this is the greatest thing ever. It's like, yeah, you've been starving in the desert, you know. Right, right, right. You got right. a really good yes. cold glass of water. It's still absolutely. a cold glass of water. It's not reinventing the wheel, you know. Absolutely, right. absolutely. It's funny. We have two Godzilla comments though. Yeah. Um, um, Roger, this is Roger Meadows, by the way. Uh Roger says they made Godzilla fat. Roger, okay. If you were laying at the bottom of the ocean and then you just got gorged on atomic energy. You probably put on a couple of pounds too, okay? Especially when you were just laying around, not running around a lot, not doing a lot of exercise. Godzilla was on lockdown. Who knows for how long? That's true. Good point. It was COVID weight. Jo Joshua says, have y'all seen Shin Godzilla? For those who don't know, Godzilla. Shin means means dead in Japanese. Shin Godzilla is good. I like it. But is Godzilla it? minus one is like S tier great. Uh, Shin Godzilla is really okay. good though. Go watch it. That's good stuff. There we go. So yes, I prefer I prefer God's my Godzilla from Japan. So yes, um, I, I do I do think you know when I when I look back at at some of the stuff that's coming out of Japan, up uh, foreign foreign in general, like Japanese Japanese and Germans, whenever they do war or aggressive mo movies like that, they do it better because they lost the war. So they they don't they don't make glory war movies, right? No, what wasn't good for them? Godzilla they, minus one is right after uh hiroshima and nagasaki it yep. is the aftermath of world war ii they yes. just lost and it's about a society putting a, it's there's a monster coming but the real story is i don't even want, it, it's about a society rebuilding itself yes. on its own on its own it, not relying on the government the americans yep. aren't going to come in nobody's going to come in and help him and by the way they got to fight off a giant monster it's it's a fantastic movie that's boot I kind of missed das part Bush, of what you guys yes. talking about, but Das Boot story about just a bunch of guys. Yeah, it wasn't about necessarily the the Nazis. It was just a bunch of guys in an extraordinary situation. Yep, there we go. Joe says agree. The Reva it was Reva, right? Reva backstory was cool. Reva. The character was was horrible. I I agree that the concept was good, Mike. You're right. That could have been a great movie, but it sure as hell wasn't. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, absolutely rebecca says yeah i was so excited for obi-wan series with a group with the prequels what a letdown yeah 100 yeah well, 100 uh, should have been about obi-wan and luke and not you know Obi -Wan chasing around princess leia with this other you know uh jedi hunter the inquisitor coming around who's who right. miraculously survives getting you know gut stabbed by lightsabers <laughs> twice 
right. By then Vader. The, and then the then at the end, when they could have redeemed her entire character when she found out where Luke was, mm-hmm. Obi-Wan should have killed her right there and then yes. said, mm-hmm. I'm sorry, but you gotta die. And that would have been that would have kind of made it better, but now yeah. he lets her go. It makes no sense. It, it would explain why Obi-Wan doesn't really see himself as a Jedi anymore because he does something very un-Jedi. Mm-hmm. Right. And right. Uh, and and he's protecting Luke by any means necessary. But uh, yeah, so many plot holes that they yep. created by doing the Obi-Wan series. I mean, Leia, she doesn't know Obi-Wan. I mean, the yeah. message doesn't, right. you know, R2's message doesn't make sense anymore. But nothing that yeah yeah that's so i have a couple uh, a couple more comments on the comedians straight straight chillax and says biden's a very good comedian <laughs> if you like dark humor and sniffing children's hair so <laughs> i guess kind of so yes well yeah if you look at if you look past the effects of uh what's the damage he's done to our society his uh yes. his administration has been a fucking joke you're right it's been <laughs> there we go see so there was something there yeah. so oh, janice brings up about bill maher sure. That's kind of true. Isn't Bill Maher kind of there? No. No, I hate Bill Not Maher. at all. <laughs> <laughs> well, there we go, Janice. The answer. I think Bill Maher will say stuff that makes sense once in a while, but I think Bill Maher is so out of touch. When uh, mm-hmm. Roseanne Barr was interviewing on his stoner podcast, whatever he was on, uh, and he didn't know who the WEF is. By the way, I don't, of course I mean, he knows. I don't mean to offend any stoners. I think weed should be legal. I just think you're crazy if you smoke it. Um, so, <laughs> it should be legal, just don't smoke it, it makes you crazy. Uh, I'm a sober guy, so uh, but no, Roseanne Barr is like makes you lazy, it totally among other things. Among, yeah, yeah, yeah. they're trying to yeah, push anyway. heart trouble now, and I'm like, yeah, hey, you smoke anything, it's gonna give you heart trouble. That's true. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if gummy I'm smoker too. I mean, the, uh, the, yeah. the only drug I use is caffeine, that's it, nothing else. Maybe Otherwise, but yeah, when, Ro- yeah. when Roseanne Barr is educating you on the WEF and you're on a political <laughs> show. <laughs> That's a problem. Yes. That's, That's a, a big massive. problem. But he Valid said point. himself that the colleges he went to indoctrinated him. And yep. he's part of that culture, that echo chamber that they're all in, that think that their farts don't smell and that he's the smartest guy in the room on every subject. But you've never seen him out amongst the public. You don't see mm. him actually having a conversation with real people ever. Because someone be brought that it. up with him before. Someone actually said, someone was talking to him about, you know, I think it was Marianne Williamson. I think he said her. her, her? <laughs> yeah. And Marianne Williamson said, okay. don't you see the people in your city who are, you know, starving and such? He goes, I see lots of people living their best life. She said, but what about Skid Row? She goes, I don't. He goes, I don't go to Skid Row. She's like, that's the problem. If you would go to Skid Row, you'd see some people who are suffering. If well, you were, if you, if you go to places that regular people are. You would see some people struggling to get yeah, around. Do you think Bill Mark goes to Target? Do you think no. Bill Mark goes to Walmart? Do you think he goes down to the local grocery store? No. I will never forget that Bill Mar, May of uh, it was May of 2020, said he didn't care about the alleged sexual abuse of Joe Biden against the woman uh, because you have to vote for him anyway. He's also the guy in 2019 that said yeah, okay. he was hoping for a recession. So that it would hurt Republicans and make people vote for a Democrat. That. I remember. You know what's funny? These things. Be careful what you wish for, because that's what he—that's <laughs> what he got under Biden. He got yes. exactly that. Mm-hmm. Yep, exactly. I, I hate 100%. these guys. And I was going to ask a question. Okay. Uh, about. Oh God! Now, now my brain went dead. No oh. worries. Scott's got one for us anyway. He says, when can we expect an erotic movie studio? Now, see, now you done messed up, Gary. Now you talk to trash. Now you got to give us a movie with AI. We got to get you an AI, and we, you got to make us a movie. And then if when it drinkers sucks, doing we're it. so yeah, gonna drinkers burn making a movie. Sucks. If yeah, drinkers that, doing it, you can do it. Drinkers oh, making a movie. Okay, there we go. <laughs> yeah. All right. That's I'm writing is. a book. I'm writing a book. That's that's a, uh, that's the most you get out of me. Nice. Because yeah, I like I, I I like my free yeah. time and YouTube and so I don't want to do too go. much outside. By the it's, way, it's um, very hard to do stuff. What you were talking about for half a million was Fortnite. Fortnite. Fortnite, thank you, thank you, chat. Yes. Thank oh, you, chat. chat yeah, says Fortnite's Fortnite. the same. Yes, yeah, that's what it was. So I, I, I rem- thought they would in, enjoy that. So, yeah. I remember my question. Um, go ahead now, real quick. So let me ask you: Are you afraid? Where do you think entertainment goes? Art entertainment goes if the government goes continues down the path they're doing right now, where the government is going to start 
actively censoring social media, the internet. I'm terrified mm. of it. People like uh, Senator Blumenthal have come out and they've been very clear. They want to inject the government and create uh, to protect people. I love this. Always be afraid if they say they're going to protect yeah. you or if they're going to uh, do something. God help yep. you if they say those things. And they're going to do something about the internet by introducing government, which I think we're suddenly talking about becoming China. It's that's where I think that leads. If the government starts, U.S. starts trying to censor to protect us, we become China, and I think entertainment dies. What do you think? Yes, I think entertainment dies and our society dies. So we should always mm. have that healthy fear that the government wants to censor us. Uh, be authoritative, wants to take away our rights, always wants to make new rules. I think that should just be how you wake up in the morning. That should be our baseline, as they say it. And uh, but having that healthy fear will keep us fighting it. And the only way we fight it, you guys know this, you're political. It's not, it's, presidents aren't going to change this locally. Yep. Locally. Your local yep. elections have to become the most important thing in your life. You know what? I, and I, I, I say that like <clears throat> having completely ignored it most of my life. Until ah, until until go. my wife till my wife got shut down, my business her business got shut yep. down forever during COVID. Then uh, never yep. again, never again am I gonna yep. ignore uh, who's lording over me locally. Uh, there we go. I we we have some you know we have some good people here where I am and some freaking knuckleheads, and we yep. need to take right. them out. I got a super chat here. Gary, he lets me know. Big B Buster says Gary's at nine ninety. Dan's at. 967. So it looks like you're winning, Gary. Dude, yes. I told you. He's so close, people. You can do it. Go and click on him, then Dan Vass, then Larry, then me. Please. There we go. In that order. I don't mind in that order. In that order. When you I'm happy be to get 10,000 people. I'd be happy <laughs> as hell. Please, go in that order. It ain't over till it's over. I'm not going <laughs> to. I've, I've only been doing yeah. this 18 years. You don't know how they suppress that. Oh, I, I, like I know. I talk about Oh, they do. Like they, they they do politics. They most certainly do. Public does. Social media, the giants, they don't. Mm. They just hit me. Joe says, well, no, "I'm looking right. forward to the new Killer Clowns from Outer Space game coming out." Nice proper that, Valkyrie there in your, uh, that, your avatar, by the way. Oh, there we go. I'm sorry. That's, not, that's Valkyrie. As, now, if you watch the movies, you yes, would go the original. Isn't she black? uh and it was like <laughs> no 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 <laughs> no but yeah yeah but yeah that's but they are now. defenders that's like the original yeah, defenders og defenders yes yeah here we go i For remember Hilda. godzilla i gotta tell you how unhappy i am my this will make some of you cry when i went to the marine corps my mom threw out all my old comics thinking that they weren't valuable yep well, i yeah. had mm -hmm. gazillions of dollars worth of comics now um, I literally had an Avengers number one that I bought at a creation comic book convention at the World Trade Center in like 1980 or whenever I bought it. It was like it was it was from 62, but I bought it in like 1980 or something like that. Yeah, where it was probably put, like 20 bucks or something like that. Something it was like 40 bucks. Yes, yeah, it was like $40. Yeah. Yes. And I had, so you might remember this, back in the 1970s, right after the Superman movie, they made the first ever DC Marvel comic that was together it was a big oh, yeah. mm -hmm. super-sized comic oh, so. and it oh, was yeah, I got superman and spider-man yes mm -hmm. superman spider-man i had that in mint i also oh, had male special i had they really don't know there was a godzilla comic book mm -hmm. yes godzilla oh, yeah. comic book two year series to only two series and he fought every single group he fought the avengers defenders he fought them all mm -hmm. and beat them all mm -hmm. he was the only person <laughs> on the person, the only monster to beat all of them, and he beat all of them together. I had all of it. He bought. He fought the Micronauts. They had yeah, a so Micronaut God, comic. Micronaut. Yeah. Oh yeah. Old. Yes. And and I had that all in the garbage. And when I think about that now, that was thirty years ago. I still want to cry. No, no. Yeah. No. I went when I went to in ninety one when I went to Moscow. Um, and I lived there for about a year and a half. I had 4,000, somewhere between four and 7,000 comics. And I was actually keeping them. I was just a fan. I had like all the new mutants. I had a ton of Spider-Man and a bunch of the original X-Men. Um, and I had a lot. I mean, four to 7,000 for me was a lot at the time. 
So I go to Moscow. I lived through a coup attempt. I go to Soviet Georgia. I lived through an attempted, another attempted coup. The Civil War starts over there. I come back home, and my brother gave away everything. <laughs> yes. That's worse than being thrown out. Yes. I, I, the only good thing about that is I know there was a bunch of guys who at least read it once and enjoyed a bunch <laughs> of classic yeah. Marvel. Yeah. But, oh, man, that hurt. Yes. That hurt a lot. There we go. There we go. Uh, that, that. That's that's hardcore. I mean, because like a mom, you kind of, it's like uh, your mom, but your brother. Yeah. Yes. I, I, he should have known better. He just he, your brother should have known better. He, he should have known better. Yes. He, he wasn't absolutely. a comic fan. And he, that wasn't his thing. And he was, he was into there baseball cards and. Hey, comic, right. comic, he, he, comic stores love that story because mom before i go back yeah. so before comics. i go back to some more chats um I, before i go back to some more chats i want to know please michael tell us what you are doing what's going on what, what can we see you doing this weekend what are you doing uh well i do political commentary every sunday at 2 30 p.m i do a live stream uh where i and i interact i take phone calls i take chat questions just talking about all the politics the thing that's a little different about what i do is i actually go backwards like when i'm talking about bill maher from 2019 i remember everything in politics going back about four decades and i can tell you how that affects what we're doing today and going forward which is why my sunday show can be anywhere from at a minimum two and a half hours it can go as long as six hours depending on people's calls and questions about all the politics international and is that on the youtube page is that on rumble where is that i'm on rumble youtube uh basically all social media under no sound bites that's with an i allowed Um, and help me because i just did a 13 second joke video today which should be a short on youtube they refused it they won't let it go go. into the shorts queue because i'm laughing about the um, the Supreme Court decision, it, oh. you know, the, you know, the, the, the mine, 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 the, the, the seagulls, mine, yeah, mine, yeah. mine, mine, yeah. mine. Okay. I readapted that, made a bunch of changes, changed my own audio, put mm-hmm. in some other artwork. And, um, but I'm using that as the, the basis. And they didn't like it. Seconds. They won't let that go into the rotation wow. for shorts. That makes no sense. Look at that. I, 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 I get away with that shit all the time. No, Here we go. Damn. Gary, tell us what you're doing. Uh, what am I doing? I am uh, yes. writing up a video that's going to come out in the next couple of days. So nice. uh, we're going to be talking about uh, the shape Hollywood's in right now. And they're, we're going to talk about their navel gazing once again. Uh, then Friday Night Tights. I have no idea who the guest is. Sorry. But uh, <laughs> yeah, Friday Night Tights. Here we go. Uh, with Chrissy Mayer. Yeah. The person yes. who introduced us, uh, who was uh, attacked. At one of her shows, somebody threw a smoke bomb. Right. Pre- uh, uh, yeah, with, like, pepper she spray. Was pepper spray. Yeah, yeah, pregnant yeah. woman, eight months yep. pregnant. Uh, total, just animal. But uh, yeah, she's doing good, and, and we love her. But uh, yeah, excellent. That's what there we go. Up. Thanks for having me on, guys. If you like this, please make sure you, you you hit that like button. It does matter. I bug you, like and subscribe. Please like and subscribe. Rebecca says, "Get Larry and Friday Night Tights." Well, there we go. I'm the next guest. Go. See that? Just there done. Go. Absolutely. <laughs> Mike has bad knees. Says glad to have found your channel, boss. So you have a fan, brother. Oh, cool. You got a fan. Hey, All thank good. you, thank you, man. Roger says still got three X Men, one Jim Lee plus X Men twelve slash thirteen first appearance of the Juggernaut. Yeah, I love and Juggernaut. And a giant X Men one. Look at that. I love That's that. Good piece. stuff. Definitely. I really do love that. That is amazing. They didn't Guys, know how to everyone... do Juggernaut. They didn't no. know how to do Juggernaut. He, they haven't it's still hard. haven't got them right yet. Uh, yeah, like Deadpool two was close. Like they, that was the most acceptable one. But uh, yeah, before that, eh. yeah, the original one he was terrible. There was a cosplay going around on Twitter uh, yesterday that was amazing. Absolutely. Really? But, okay. Yeah, if you can find it, look for the Juggernaut. Just search Juggernaut cosplay. It's freaking great. It was looks. It is, was it with the helmet? Was yes. It, oh, it's ball. straight up comic book juggernaut. The guy's basically in a suit, and it's just his face is coming out the helmet, but his arms are the right proportion, oh. proper costume. Right. You give well, me so much damn homework. <laughs> All right, guys, please follow these gentlemen if you would. Follow Gary at, at Nerdrotix on Twitter. Follow Mike at on Rumble at No Sound Bites Allowed. Everyone, thank you so much for watching. Do me a favor. Once this is over, 
Once this is over, go back on YouTube and leave a comment. Once we're done, go back on YouTube afterwards, leave a comment, go back on Facebook. If you watch watching, leave whatever, leave a comment afterwards. The Al Gore rhythms like that very much. Have a great night, everybody. I will be seeing you all tomorrow, 1 p.m. I'll be live, 1 p.m. WYSL, Rochester, New York. See you all.